Alright. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Justin from LB Baseball Blogs. Back again with another video with Tim from the Cash Kelly and AC Sports Report. Tim, what's up? Nothing. How's it going? Doing good, man. Um, this is the third video we've, we've done today, and I'm really appreciating help, having you help me out. Um, today we're covering the Rockies, and instead of having the top three breakthrough stars, let's have the number one guy just to... Uh, we don't really, no one really cares about the top three stars, so let's just talk about the number one guy. Tim, who do you have at number one? Well, uh, you said Rex Brothers. I have uh, the guy who they say is going to be up this year is uh, William Castro, or uh, not Castro, Rosario. He's supposed to be their catcher. Uh, Chris Ionette is obviously going to begin the season there. Uh, this guy's only 22. Uh, some injuries have slowed him down, but supposedly he's going to be a very good catcher. Yeah, um, Rex Brothers, um, Rockies have, um, I think Rex Brothers, he said, it says right here, some in the Rockies organization have compared, uh, Brothers to Billy Wagner. I mean, I don't know what's going on, because this is all coming out of, uh, Lindy Sports Daniels. Um, I don't really see that right now, Brothers is not compared to Billy Wagner, even though Billy Wagner is retired. Um, he went out with the sad way to get out with an injury. It was in the playoffs against the Giants. I think the ball hit off his hand, and that pretty much said, my season is over, my career is pretty much done. Um, so, do you compare Rex Brothers to Billy Wagner at all? Yeah, he could be something like that. I mean, 90 miles an hour, I, I could see something like that, but that's a stretch for a rookie. Yeah. Um, so, what do you want to talk about? We can have, we were, let's talk about these relievers, um, their arrivals, I meant. Um, they got some pretty okay arrivals, but um, there was one particular trade that really caught my eye this year, and it was the trade for Clint Barmas for Felipe Pagliano uh, from the Pagliano, Astros. Yeah. yeah, Clint Barmas was a really decent, actually, second baseman for them. I mean, I don't know why they traded him. I think they were just trying to work with their uh, pitching rotation. I mean, last season, Yubato just blew up. I didn't. I didn't even know Yabal was going to do so good last season. Then you got Jorge De La Rosa. I think he had a off and on DL stint, and then Aaron Cook, who's uh, out for indefinitely right now with an injury. Um, Jason Hamill. You got Julius Chassin. That guy was eh, he was iffy last season. Um, do you think that Felipe Pagliano is going to be in their pitching rotation, taking an Aaron Cook spot? No, I actually think uh, Pagliano could be a reliever. Looking at his numbers from last year, it's like one and nine with five eleven ERA. I think I'd be. I'm not even sure he'll make the team. Quite frankly, I, I agree with you. I think that was a bad trade. Uh, they they, based, they just gave you something. It was a bad trade, basically. That, yeah. That's what it comes down to. Uh, Aaron Cook, like you said, is going to be out for some time. Uh, and I heard on MLBTradeRumors.com yesterday it said that they'd be willing to trade him. So who knows what the deal is with him? Uh, Julius Chassin, like you said, is uh, didn't have a great season last year, but he's supposed to be very good. That's what I've heard. Yeah, um, I've heard the same thing a little bit. Um, he was nine and eleven last year. I mean, that's a pretty he's he's iffy right now with them. Um, I just think that he should start in the bullpen right now. I put give uh, Paulino a chance in the uh, number five spot. I think Chassin, at near the end of the season, he was just pretty. Eh, he he's not really like. Bolt, uh, yeah, I, I think the right rotation now. will go like this. Ubaldo Jimenez, Jorge De La Rosa, Julius Chassin, uh, if Cook is out, Jason Hamill will move up to four, and then that fifth spot's basically up for grabs. Yeah, so pretty much what we're saying, it could be Rex Brothers. Maybe Rex Brothers could uh, come out of nowhere and just take that spot. Because if Aaron Cook is not going to be making his start, he's probably going to miss maybe four or five starts. If he's if he's healthier, he could make probably make lose th two or three spots. I don't know what's going on with his injury. Um, I know it's an arm injury. That's what most pitchers have. So I can probably see either Rex Brothers taking the fifth spot and moving Chastain to the bullpen. I just don't see Ch Chastain right now in their pitching rotation. So um, I got a quick question for you, Tim. How well do you think Jorge De La Rosa is going to do this season for the Rockies? I mean, last season... Um, he was he was had a pretty okay season. He was eight and seven, four point two two ERA, about one hundred twenty one innings pitched. Do you think he's going to improve this season? Yeah, I think. Well, I mean, I rank anything as like above a four ERA a bad season. I mean, 
he has a bunch of talent. That's what I've heard from everyone. Um, he's a good pitcher. He's probably not a number two, but. Looking at this, I, I think he certainly has potential. And if this team is going to win, he's going to have to be a big part of all, for, of them winning. Yeah. Um, um, I, I think the ERA will drop to about like 370, 360, somewhere in that area. Um, he was in his contract year at the end of last season. Um, he, was in, he was in free agency for a little while. Um, I heard some teams had interest, but he said he'd really, really want to stay with the Rockies. So the Rockies re-signed him. I think it's to a two-year or maybe a one-year deal. I don't I know. I believe it was a two-year. Yeah, I don't know, like, off the top of my head, but he's a good guy to have in your pitching rotation, no doubt about it. I mean, the Rockies had a good, has a good pitching rotation. I mean, Aaron Cook, he's just, I mean, I really like watching him. He's pretty cool. Um, Jason Hamill still has stuff to improve. Julius Shostin is still not that guy to be, in my words. Um, I think Rex Brothers should have that number five spot. So, um, do you think that's where, where, where would you put Yobaldo? How many wins do you think he's going to do? Yobaldo should win somewhere around 20 games, uh, 18 or 19. He, he was on pace last season to win about 23 games at the tra- or at the All-Star break, and it just he had a terrible second half of the season. He yeah. was like 16-1 and one or something, and it, he just had a bad second half. Um, for me, I, I think... If he can put together a full season, he could for sure win the Cy Young. Yeah, hands down. I mean, I I, I really enjoyed watching you ball the last year. How many games was it that he went undefeated until he like gave, actually gave up a loss? Wasn't it? Like, I think it was like twelve or yeah, ten like, or somewhere in that area. Yeah, I think I don't think that's gonna happen again. I think that. I think you since they're starting off the season in Arizona, you pretty much is going to already cream the Diamondbacks in the opening day. So Yobaldo's pretty much going to win off the bat. I don't know for sure because I'm going to that opening day game. Um, I'm pretty excited to see Yobaldo pitch. So this is actually the first time I'm actually going to see Yobaldo pitch because when I go to that opening day game, I'm going to try to get some film on that. So um, I think Yobaldo's going to have a good outing against the Diamondbacks just to throw that in there. So um, let's talk about some key acquirements, Tim. Is that cool? Yeah, yeah go ahead. All right, so their key acquirements right now, as I said before, they got rid of their longtime second baseman, uh, Clint Barmas, for pretty much nothing for Flippy Pollyano, who has that trouble still. Um, but they got some good cur- trades. I mean, Matt Lindstrom, um, I don't really know much about Matt Lindstrom. He sounds pretty familiar. but He's I, a good bullpen pitcher, yeah. Yeah, I heard he's a pretty good bullpen pitcher. Um, you also got a good guy in Jose Lopez. He's coming over from the Mar- uh, from the Mariners. And then you got a guy who had a great season last year, Ty Wigginton. Um, rumors were going around that he was going to play second baseman. I mean, he doesn't have a second baseman type of body, not like checking him out or anything, being any like eh, eh, like that. Um, but I just don't see. He can probably make a good third baseman, but... You have, he has to beat out. Yeah, he actually he actually played I think third base when he originally started with the Mets. Yeah, I, I don't really know. I didn't even know he played for the Mets actually, which is kind of funny. Um, he has to if he's going to be the third baseman, he has to beat out Ian Stewart. But second baseman is going to be Jose Lopez. Um, most people say he could be in the bench because Ian Stewart's pretty much been their longtime third baseman. Todd Helton's back with the first baseman role, so he can't go to first base. He could go to first base when Todd Helton has that day off. Sometimes some pe- some people do. So, where would you where would you actually put Ty Wigginton? Is he in your starting hitting area in your batting order? Uh, no, actually he's not. He could play second base. I mean, Jose Lopez is not a great hitter. Uh, obviously, moving from Safeco Field to Coors Field will help him hit better. I I think he will hit. 15, 20, or 15 to 17 home runs this season and bat about 250. But uh, he's in the, there for his glove. Moving from third to second, he should be a pretty good second baseman. I pretty, yeah, I think he's going to be a pretty good second baseman. I mean, he doesn't have... I mean, he's a pretty, he's a pretty big guy, but he, he will actually pretty fit on the bench as a bench roll. I, I just don't really see him playing in second baseman where he has to be really, really, really active. But at third baseman... You're just catching the ball, just try to get somebody out, and then at first you just stand there and just try to get the the guy who just hit the ball. But he's gonna party. He's gonna start off at maybe the bench roll. I mean, he's gonna be a good at bat for this team. So let's talk about Cargo. We cannot forget about this guy right now. I mean, 
We are trying. We'll, we'll just stop with the interview, with the break recap right now. But guys, we have. We're trying to pursue uh, Cargo to have an interview with us. We. I have and actually, Eric Young Jr. And Eric Young Jr. I mean, he's pretty cool. Um, but Cargo's manager. Um, he said that he's gonna be talking to Cargo about the interview. So expect and hopefully the interview to come soon. Tim will be on there. AC will possibly be on there. It's that's okay with Tim. So, uh, that's just let's just a little quick inter thing that we got we have to throw in. So let's talk about cargo, Tim. What do you think that how many home runs do you have cargo hitting this year? I you know last year he had that thirty four uh, home run season with that he had an excellent season last year. Where do you how many home runs do you have him hitting this year? Thirty seven um, again. Cargo was supposed to be a top prospect for the A's. He got traded there for as the big piece in uh, the Matt Holiday trade when he wasn't doing too well for them. Basically, for me, I would put that him at about 27 home runs, a little lower than he did last season, 27 home runs, somewhere in that area. And uh, he batted 336 last season. I'm not quite sure if he'll bat that high. In my opinion, he probably should have been second in MVP instead of Albert Pools, but um, and probably even better season than Joey Votto. I mean... This guy had an absolutely amazing season last year. In 145 games, he was able to bat 336, 34 home runs, and 117 RBIs. I mean, the guy is a beast of a player. Uh, th there's no question about that. Um, and, and looking at a few things, I would say this guy could be the best player in baseball. I rank him in my top 10 players. Yeah, I actually have him, like, if I had a top 10 player... I would actually think I'll put him at number four. I think he's pretty good at bat. If it's players now, I have him at number four. I think he's a good at bat to have on that squad. I mean, he had a breakout season because in 2009, he was just like one of those guys that you see in the outfield, but he had 13 home runs and 29 RBIs in 09, and then this 2010 season came out of nowhere. 34 home runs, 117 RBIs. A total difference from 29 RBIs to 117. That's over... Like sixty over, I mean that's just amazing on how well he did last season. And guys, right now let's just end this video with our projected batting order, and that is your little season preview of the Colorado Rockies. Um, Tim, who do you have at number one? We I've been talking about this. So who do you have at number one? Dexter Fowler. Yeah, yeah, I would go with that. I mean, I don't have a projected exact order of the starting lineup. I just know who's in it. I mean, because this is all coming off of Lindy Sports Annuals. Um, I can make some ma some minor tweaks to this. I mean, Dexter Fowler, they have him at number one. Two is Brian Spillwars. Three is Carlos Gonzalez. Four at Troy Chulowitzki. Todd Helton, he's going to come after Tulo. And then Ian Stewart, Jose, and then Ionetta. Then we have that pitcher slot. Um, I actually see Jose Lopez. Um, I can see him switching spots with Brian Spillwars. Um... That's just like the only tweak I have, except I think Todd Helton should go down a spot and bring um, Ian Stewart up a spot. I mean, Todd Helton's a good bat. I mean, I'm not bashing on any of the Todd Helton fans. I think that he's going to be a good, okay, maybe six bat, and good six batter. So, um, I'm Justin from the T uh, from MLB Baseball Blogs, and I'll talk to you guys soon. That's Tim from the uh, Cash Kelly and AC Sports Report. I'll talk to you guys soon.